Y'all might have seen a while back when I did a uh, LED button mod for the Game Boy Color. Well, finally got another one for the uh, Game Boy Advance here. Uh, so this is the uh, ARC GBA, ARC GBA from uh, Natalie the Nerd. Um, if I'm being 100% honest, I'm not sure if she sent this to me or if she sent a few to one of my buds and one of my buds had, you know, extras and decided to pass it my way. But uh, either way, uh, this was provided to me and uh, I wanted to do a video on it. I thought they looked pretty neat. Uh, but what this is, it's actually really fascinating. I hadn't seen uh, what Natalie had done with this before until I started looking at this close up, but this is just a uh, flat flex ribbon cable with it looks like multiple addressable RGB LEDs on it. And it looks like the controller is actually an RP2040, uh, like a Raspberry Pi Pico, which um, super fascinating. Um, definitely, definitely not a problem with that. I, I haven't seen anything using these really uh, until lately. And I think they're super neat chi chips. There you go. I can see the light on that a little bit better. Um, but anyway, addressable RGB, which means it has uh, patterns and all sorts of good stuff. Uh, I'm fairly certain that when you buy one of these, it looks like the regular price is about 55 bucks, at least on Natalie's website, which I'm pretty sure that's in USD, but it might be in Australian dollars. I don't know. Uh, you'll, don't quote me on that. Um, but it looks like they're on sale down to 45 Um Looks pretty neat. If you do grab one of these, you're also probably going to want to grab clear buttons and clear membranes because that's like half the point of having RGB. Um, you can use the uh, like tinted ones, like if you want the smoke buttons, those will work, though it will significantly decrease the available brightness. Uh, I am going to be putting these in a GBA that actually already has clear buttons and membranes because I want as much possible swag as I can in this thing. Uh, I don't know, it, it just, it feels right to put it in here. This thing does already have some LED mods, so I think it'll be a nice fit. And plus, if all goes well, I think the um, buttons are gonna end up brighter than the screen anyhow, so. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get this bad boy torn down here. For those that recognize this GBA, this is one of the first Game Boys that I ever modded, or it's, it's at least the first Game Boy Advance that I ever modded. Um, certainly not the first Game Boy though. I, I started with SPs, because of course I did. But uh, I don't know, this thing is, um, this thing has seen many forms through the years and uh, on one hand I, I keep thinking oh no it's historical I shouldn't ever mess with it and then on the other hand I think well the original way I modded this was just unsafe or flat out falling apart so I don't know I keep changing my mind I have completely redone the battery mod to something that is actually safe on that note which I'll probably put a video up on eventually, but that's besides the point. Uh, these shell halves are both so absurdly cracked, it's a surprise this thing even holds together. And my battery mod has an off setting, but I am going to also unplug the battery itself just in case. Not that I think it'll matter. Flip this up so I can lift this up. So we can flip this up. Ah, oh, shoot, I forgot. I forgot my TPU was black filament. I thought it was clear filament. Well, maybe it'll still work. Um, this console has my tactile button switch mod. It might actually not even fit with this, so 
I'd have to grab a different GBA. But, ooh, if all goes well, maybe it will. I'll have to reroute that, uh, that wire, but I think this will work. My concern is I'm probably going to have to lift this up and pull that out after soldering this down, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. This uses a lot of the same solder points that I used for my tactile button mod, but I think we'll be okay. You know what? I have an idea. Get this lined up. Can tape it down so it stops moving on me. four solder points or something like that maybe five there should be one of the buttons several of the buttons plus a ground and a voltage ah, I see that should be right about there to come back there's another point I'm about to miss That was about okay. Peel that off. And there are two solder joints right below it. One right here. And one right here. just go right back together. Feels like everything's seeding enough. It's a little wonky on the bottom here, 
but I think that's just something I'm gonna have to deal with. I bet it'll be fine if I just uh, send it. I don't know, let's try it out. Oh, my D-pad does not work almost at all. That's unfortunate. I kind of figured that might happen. Ah, so unfortunately Natalie's LED mod and my um, tactile mod are not compatible with each other simultaneously, but plug that in, switch that on, you should be able to boot that up. And, yeah, you can't see crap because it's not diffusing right anyhow. I think it needs those membranes to diffuse. Alright, so let me go ahead and get this torn down and uh, I'll swap this into another GBA and we'll go from there. Alright, so plan B was going to be also somewhat ambitious. I was going to upgrade that, um, that uh, motherboard that I hand assembled. Um, I did a stream a while back assembling a GPA from scratch where I assembled this motherboard. Um, unfortunately, UP does not have a test pad, so I can wire this up to any other button, but it means that one of these solder pads does not line up and it'll make for a uh, less clean install and I think for something that I'm showing off in a clear shell that's not exactly the best match. Um, also, this way I don't have to downgrade my buttons, so I think... Blessing in disguise, maybe? I don't know. I guess I'll find a uh, GBA that uses a stock motherboard. Okay, here we go. Just a few GBAs later, and I found one that I think we can install it in. Familiar looking uh, housing here. But trust me, it's not the same GPA. In this one, we have the uh, well received C screen. I don't know why I kept this. Anyway, I suppose I should swap out the buttons, huh? I'm surprised I used the original membranes, especially when they're literally cracked. Wanted to use that, uh, this color one originally. I don't know, just, it, it felt appropriate. and normally I bought this shell on Taobao on a whim I thought it was gonna be the neatest thing and then uh, I don't know sometime after it shipped I I had a moment where I realized, what what the hell am I even buying this for? Like, why? What's what's going on? Um, and then I, I mean, at that point it was too late. Thankfully, it's not the most expensive GBA shell I've ever purchased. Not that that makes it any better. Um, I think all in all, I ended up paying like fifty bucks for it. It was like 30 bucks for the shell and then another 20 for shipping, because Taobao. 
and all things considered 30 bucks is actually a really good price for a custom shell. Hobamako, oh, this doesn't look like a custom shell. That looks just like every other generic aftermarket in this color that is also uh, glow in the dark. Well, my friend, you're about to learn that that is not quite true. As soon as I flip this over. <laughs> Put that on there. It's custom UV printed. <laughs> Gerudo Link Breath of the Wild shell. Uh. Like, it, it peeves me whenever I see, um, like, custom UV-printed Game Boy Advance consoles with, like, fourth generation or later Pokemon on it, because it's, like, that, that Pokemon was never installed on that console, so it's a weird thing to, like, nostalgia over. That screw post just cracked. Nice. I don't know, it still seems somewhat snug. So, like, Breath of the Wild on a GBA certainly isn't my top pick of uh, art sources, but I don't know. I, I, I couldn't pass up the hilarity of uh, the subject matter, especially since it came with an, an actually rather nice custom box, too. matches the print on the GBA and everything. Not even that into Legend of Zelda. And yet here I am. Anyway. Ta-da! How about some bad Miss the solder joint. Oh, it definitely has to come apart too because this shoulder button doesn't work. Ah, uh, darn. Okay, well, bear with me. Ta da! It's working! I don't know. I think I just missed the solder joint. I redid all of them, cleaned it up again. We're good to go. Uh, so now I just need to put it back together again. Bear with me, just a moment. Ta-da! And just like that, it's reassembled. How convenient, right? And I've even got a game here. Oh, wait. Ooh. That was weird. Okay. Hey! I got lights this time. So it says... Uh, start and A to change colors, but it appears to be mapped to select, not start, but that's okay. I like that. There's different zones and everything. Let me kill some lights here. Meh? Huh? Ah, huh? pretty neat. Oh, it looks like it starts at the brightest and uh, select and up 
changes the brightness. So there's, whoop, there's off, bright, less bright. Oop. There's no debouncing, it appears. So there's bright, less bright, dim, and off. Three levels. And then A and up together to save the settings so that when we turn it off and reboot it, it's still in the same settings. But I don't think I want that specific one. Is that rotating through something? I don't know. No, I think that was just white. There we go. I mean, if we're going to have RGB, obviously we got to have that, right? this thing go well with the buttons at max brightness and the screen at max brightness this kit is notorious for um, uh, having power consumption woes and GBA seems to be doing fine I haven't measured it but Natalie says the um, Arc GBA kit is actually pretty low when it comes to power usage, and I'll believe her. That would be a weird thing to lie about, especially something that I could check easily. Uh, something like this, I tend to not bother checking the power consumption because it's, like, obviously it's going to use power, right? Um, but since this adds zero peripheral function, it's literally just for looks, I don't think it matters how much it uses. Um, but either way, she says it's pretty negligible. I'll take her word for it. Looks like there is a pressure spot in the middle of that screen. That's annoying. It's also annoying is how long it takes to turn it down. Yeah, I didn't like this screen for a lot of reasons. This weird touchpad control was uh, one of them, I think. Though in hindsight, I didn't quite realize you could use that to desaturate the screen. And knowing that now, I probably shouldn't have judged it as harshly, but oh well. Is what it is. There are better kits these days, anyhow. And yeah, all of the buttons work just fine. Exactly as expected. So, yeah, pretty neat. I'm into it. Um, I, for one, love to see more microcontrollers in GBA projects. Also, I'm pretty pleased with how that came out. That, that would have been perfect, man. Too bad. Oh, well. Uh, that's what I get for installing that clicky mod. Tactile. This thing is pretty sweet. Um, obviously, you know, like I said, it doesn't add any actual peripheral function to the GBA. Like, there's no input mapping. There's no macros. There's, there's nothing, at least with a backlight kit, you know, you can use the GBA a little bit more comfortably in environments you want to use it in. Um, whereas this thing, you know, it just adds some flair to your Instagram pictures or something. You know, I don't, I don't know. Um, believe me, I'm not trying to talk shit. I am all about RGB. If you couldn't tell from uh, that one switch video I did. I literally still have these things on. I think it's so cool. Um, LED mods, yeah, I'm all, I'm all about that. I mean, 
except for in my computer. I usually turn those off because otherwise it'd be on all the time. You know, you know how it is. But yeah, LED mods, I think they're the shit. And this is certainly, uh, certainly pretty neat. Um, one thing I think I might like to see, there might be a few more colors I think would be pretty neat. Um, also, I think I might like a little bit more brightness to try and match the uh, screen brightness. I don't recall how the brightness of this specific screen compares to other backlight kits, but I don't like how easily the screen is able to overpower the LEDs on max brightness. But granted, I don't normally use it on max brightness, so it's a little bit less of an issue. But more options is more better in my opinion. I know higher brightness will significantly tank the battery life, and that is a um, that is a uh, side effect I'm willing to accept. Um, not like I'm gonna actually play this GBA anyhow, but yeah, I really like it. Um, thanks for sending it my way, Natalie. Um, hopefully, you intended it to go my way. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird order of events that ended up with this thing in my mailbox and uh, I'm super glad I got it. I was probably going to buy one even if she didn't send one so um, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Uh, next time she's just going to wait for me to buy it. No, I'm kidding. I love you, Natalie. Um, this is this is awesome. I'm digging it. I think it's really neat. Uh, like I said, obviously it's you know, you, you got to know you want one of these things but it does exactly what it says. It's exactly as easy to install as you think it is. It does require soldering, of course. It doesn't seem to affect any buttons. Unfortunately, it does not work with uh, my tactile mod, uh, nor does it work with these black N64 Freak GBA boards. Uh, well, it will work, but uh, you'll have to remap the up button to pretty much anything else, because apparently that's the only button that doesn't have a test pad on these things. Um, and no GBAs were harmed in the making of this. But yeah, I think it's super neat. I'm into it. I'm digging it. I like to see more stuff like this. I think, I think she's working on these for all the systems. I hope so. I like it. Anyway, that's all I got. Simple LED mod, Not nothing too complicated. Um, actually, no. I've got something. Natalie, I think it's a real missed opportunity not having um, shoulder buttons and these side bumpers as LED zones. Maybe a separate mod for that? I don't know. I think it'd be neat though. Anyway, that's all I got. I will shoot a link to Natalie's store if you guys want to check this out. Uh, at the time of filming, they are out of stock. But I think that is because I got one of the samples and she's still waiting on the actual retail stock to stock them. Um, I'll try and time this video to go up when she has stock. So, you know, if you're, if you're watching this at the time it goes up, there's, click the link, it'll probably be in stock unless they sell out. But until then, um, she has in stock notifications, it's not too bad. Uh, but that's all I've got. Um, super cool mod. Again, thanks for sending it my way, and uh, I'll catch you all next time. Oh, and just because I literally mentioned the box, this is what it looks like. You've got this pretty cool uh, Breath of the Wild art on the back, and then on the front, we've just got Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and it slides out. We've got this uh, less nice insert, but... GBA goes in there, get custom foam cut out. I think it's pretty neat. Like it's it's a good display piece, I think. I don't know if they're still in stock. Um, like I said, got off Tabo though, so it's not exactly the easiest thing to buy. Certainly not the cheapest. Uh, definitely do not recommend for the price. It's just one of those cheap ten dollar aftermarket shells, but with some UV printing on it. Um, and then a somewhat nice custom box. I think the funny playing boxes are a little bit nicer, so 
um, might be worth going that route instead. But of course I understand the novelty of having a Gerudo Link shell. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, more RGB is more, more better, am I right? <laughs>